friends. Groucho was a young rabbit. His best friend's name was Calico. Calico was a pretty little cat. One winter morning, Calico found a big white wool ball. She meowed to call Groucho. Meow, meow. Groucho immediately ran to her. Calico showed him the wool ball and they started playing with it. Soon, Groucho got entangled in the wool and struggled to come out of it. He started crying. Calico tried to help him but was unable to set him free. Calico asked Groucho to calm down and quickly ran to get help. Help! 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 Aunt Rat was passing by. She asked Calico, What is the matter, my dear? Calico said, Please help us. My friend Groucho is entangled in a wool ball. Aunt Rat said, Do not worry. I will help you. She then went with Calico and cut the wool with her sharp teeth and set Groucho free. Calico proved that she was a true friend to Groucho. Too proud to be friends A swan and a crane lived on the different sides of a lake. Every day they went out in search of food and returned in the evening. Their life had become very boring. To make life more interesting, the swan decided to be friends with the crane. However, the crane said, Your legs are short and mine are long. How can we be friends? Later, the crane realized her mistake and went to the swan's house. This time the swan refused. I cannot be your friend because your neck is not long and straight like me. After a while, the swan decided to be the crane's friend. However, again the crane refused. So they lived alone on the different sides of the lake and they often met with the proposal to be friends. Every time, they were too proud to accept it. They are still alone when they could easily become friends. The Ungrateful Snake Once a traveler saved a snake. The sly snake tried to bite him. The traveler shouted, Please stop. Let a wise person decide this for us. Just then, a jackal came along. The traveler asked him, I freed the snake when she was under the stone and now she wants to bite me. It is not fair that she bites me when I helped her, is it? The wise jackal replied, I don't believe you unless I see the incident repeat itself. So they went to the place where it all happened. There the jackal said, Lie down snake. When the snake did so, the traveller covered her with the stone. When he was about to release her, the jackal said, Do not lift the stone. The ungrateful one wanted to bite you, so let her free herself. Then they went away, leaving the snake under the stone. The Clever Ostrich A proud lioness felt that only the ostrich was her equal match and made friends with her. One day she said, Ostrich, will you come with me to catch prey? The ostrich agreed. They saw some quails and ran after them. The lioness caught one quail but the ostrich killed many by striking them with her claw. When the lioness saw this, she was jealous. That night, the lioness cubs noticed that the ostrich had no teeth. They went to their mother and said, Who says she is your equal? She has no teeth. This made the lioness very proud and challenged the ostrich. Get up and fight, the clever ostrich said. Do you see an anthill there? Go to that side of the anthill and I will go to this side of it. The ostrich struck the anthill and sent the ants towards the lioness. As the lioness fought the ants, the ostrich ran away and never came back. The Cunning Hyena A hungry hyena stood under a dove's nest and demanded, You had better give me one of your chicks or I shall fly up and eat all of you. 
the poor dove was scared. Weeping, she gave the hyena her chick. After the hyena had left, a parrot came to visit the dove. The dove cried, "The hyena has taken my chick." He said that he would fly up and eat us all. So I had to give him one of my chicks. The parrot said, "You are such a fool. Don't you know that hyenas cannot fly? Don't let him trick you any more." The next day, when the hyena came back, the dove said, "You cannot fool me any more. I was told that hyenas don't fly." The surprised hyena asked, "Who said that to you?" The dove said, "My wise friend, the parrot did." The hyena walked away very disappointed as he could not trick the dove again. The swans next. Long ago, swans had graceful bodies and short necks. On the other hand, ducks had big and bulky bodies. One day, an argument started between the swans and the ducks. The proud swans said, "We will swim first as we are more beautiful." The ducks angrily said, "We should swim first because the last time you refused to let us have our turn." At the same time, a flock of geese flew by. They stopped to settle the argument. One of the geese said, This pond is quite large. You both can share it. The swans were not satisfied with the settlement, and a fight broke out. The ducks bit the swans' necks and pulled them hard. The swans' necks had stretched so long that they almost lost their balance. They finally managed to fold their necks in a way that they could steadily hold them. Accepting their defeat. The swans shared the pond with the ducks and swam in turns. Leftovers for platypus. Long ago, all the animals in the forest looked the same. Even Mother Earth, who had created them, could not tell the difference. So she sent out a message: "I am going to change how everyone looks like." So all the animals are requested to come and see me. A platypus was under the water playing with his friend the fish. He did not hear Mother Earth's message. He was playing even after the fish had gone. When she came back with shining scales and fins, the platypus learned about the message. However, by the time he reached Mother Earth's home, There were only leftovers. He was given a beaver's tail, a duck's bill and flippers and a bear's fur and claws at the end of the flippers. When he came back, the fish laughed at him. The platypus was so embarrassed that he dug a hole in the ground near the river to live in. He continues to live there even now. The monkeys learn a lesson. A group of monkeys always troubled the animals that came to drink from the lake of the forest. One day, a herd of zebras was drinking water from the lake. As usual, the monkeys started throwing twigs at them. One of the mares came with her little foal. The twig hurt her leg badly. As the other zebras dressed her wound, the foal started crying. Seeing this, a young zebra stallion said, "Monkeys, why do you trouble innocent animals? Don't you see that the animals could be wounded?" The monkeys only laughed and teased them. The angry stallion lifted a monkey and placed him on a hot rock. This burned his buttocks and legs. Then the stallion kicked another monkey so hard. that he went flying to the other end of the lake the rest of the monkeys ran away and never came back to the lake again since that day they stopped playing tricks on other animals the rock on the tortoise's back this was the time 
when the tortoise did not have shells on its body. One such tortoise was running a race with a deer. Suddenly, he tripped and fell down from a deep rocky hill. When he woke up, he was spinning on his back. He felt dizzy. He also felt a lot of pain. When the tortoise tried to get up, he could not. He felt something hard and heavy on his back. He realized that he had a cracked rock on his wrinkly body. The deer came down the hill and tried to pull the rock off the tortoise's back. However, the tortoise screamed in pain because the rock would not come off. Then the deer said, You look better with the rock and it will protect you from the sun. Now let us have another race. The tortoise said, No thanks and he curled up inside his rock. Since then, the tortoise had a shell forever. The Leopard's Spots A leopard and his wife were invited to a jungle party. They both wanted to look very special. So they decided, since each of us has a plain yellow coat, let's paint something on it. The leopard brought a pint of black paint but could not decide what to paint on their bodies. After a while, the leopard and his wife looked at each other and shouted in unison, Spots of black! They both painted black spots on their yellow coats and went to the party later that night. Everyone at the party loved their new creation. Soon all the leopards painted black spots on their coats. After a while, the leopard and his wife were tired of the spots. However, when they tried to wash off their coats, the paint had sunk in well beyond the fur. They could not get it off. The other leopards could not get it off either. To this day, leopards still cannot get their spots off. The Clever Crocodile When hippopotamuses lived on land, there was a hippo king named Leonel. He had a beautiful wife and seven children. The king loved to give big feasts but strangely, no animal knew his name except for his wife. During one feast, Leonel said to his guests, You all have attended many of my feasts and yet None of you know my name. If you cannot say my name, you are requested to leave. As all the animals left, a crocodile said, What if I could say your name in the next feast? Lionel said, Then I will live in the water forever. The crocodile thought of a plan. He dug a hole and buried himself. When Lionel's wife was walking to the river, she tripped over him and screamed, Lionel, please help me. Thus, the crocodile learned the hippo king's name. At the next feast, he said it as promised. Lionel and his family went to live in the river. Foolish Monkeys Once, heavy rains were flooding the river bank and all the animals were running up the hills. Some monkeys had climbed up the treetops to save themselves. When they saw the swimming fish, one of the foolish monkeys said, The fish are going to be drowned. See how they are struggling in the water. The other monkey joined in. I think they were left behind because they do not have legs. The first monkey said, Let us help them to get out. One by one, the monkeys brought all the fish out of the water and put them carefully on the dry land. The first monkey said, They were tired, so they are sleeping. Had it not been for us, all these poor fish would have been drowned. The other monkey said, When they wake up, they will be very grateful. The foolish monkeys did not know that the fish were all dead. The main zebra. 
Long ago, all the zebras had eyes in front of their heads. A female zebra always praised herself. I am so beautiful. Look at my lovely stripes and tail. However, her favorite thing to boast about was her eyes. Aren't my eyes so perfectly placed in the front of my head? She said. All the animals would whisper behind her. She always brags, vain creature. Soon they became so annoyed that they started planning to play a trick on her. One day, when the zebra walked past the jackal, she said, "Are my eyes not the most beautiful you have ever seen?" "Yes," replied the jackal cunningly. Suddenly, he pounced on her. and she fell very hard on her face this forced her eyes to the side of her head when the zebra saw her reflection in a stream nearby she was angry at the jackal she turned around to punish him but the jackal was gone the bold vulture once a vulture noticed that his feathers were falling off When he asked other birds, they said, "You are losing feathers. Don't worry, new feathers would grow soon." However, the vulture was very upset. Soon he became thin and sickly with worry about his feathers. The other birds pitied him, and each of them gave him a feather to stick on his body. When all the birds had given him their feathers, The vulture became a beautiful bird with the feathers of all colors. He then became very arrogant, showing off his borrowed feathers. He declared that he was the most beautiful of all the birds. He became so proud that he asked the birds to recognize him as their king. The angry birds pecked off the feathers that they had given him. and took them away that is why even to the present day the vulture is a grim ugly and bold bird the fly and the buffalo once the queen of the forest invited her subjects to a grand feast she had arranged for four large tables and said the wild buffalo the elephant the hippopotamus and the rhinoceros will head each of the tables they will in turn share the food with the smaller animals at the buffalo's table there was a small fly the buffalo shared the first course of food among the other animals but forgot the fly so the fly shouted you have not given me my share the buffalo ignored him during the second course The fly called out again, but the buffalo pointed at his eyes and said, "Look here, you will get your food later." When the fly complained, the queen of the forest said, "It is indeed the buffalo's mistake for not giving food to the fly. In future, the fly can get food from the buffalo's eyes as he pointed at them. Therefore, Flies are always seen around a buffalo's eyes. The hasty hunter. A hunter came to a forest and saw a fox sleeping on the top of a big rock. The hunter thought, "If I kill that fox and sell the skin, I'll make a fortune." Then Taking a heavy stone in his fist, the hunter thought, "With that money, I shall buy some seeds, and I shall sow the seeds in my father's corn field at home." People passing by my field of corn will say, "Oh, what great corn that hunter has!" Then I shall say to them, "Keep away from my corn," but they won't listen to me. Then I shall shout again. Stay away from my corn, but still they won't take any notice of me. Then 
I shall scream with all my might. Keep away from my horn. And then they listen. And the hunter screamed so loudly that the fox woke up and ran away. The hunter regretted his hasty behavior and went home empty-handed. The King Owl An owl flew to an oak tree at the end of the forest to pick up his food every night. The other owls asked him, How do you get your food so easily? The owl said, One night I saw a half-chopped bar of an oak tree. It was full of insects and mice. When I tried to catch the mice, they ran away quickly. So I thought of an idea and I brought wheat to feed the mice. Soon they became fat and healthy. They could not run fast either. They thought I was their friend and waited each day for me to bring them food. He continued. I brought food for the mice faithfully. Then I started picking up one mouse each day and took it home to eat. In this way, the clever owl did not have to search for food ever again. The other owls were so impressed that they appointed him as their king. The Revengeful Woodcutter One day, a woodcutter's son threw a stone at a snake. The upset snake bit the boy and he fainted. Even after the cure, the boy was in great pain. When the woodcutter saw this, he was angry and wanted to take revenge. So the woodcutter took his axe and hit the snake. However, instead of the snake's head, he cut off his tail. The snake was in great pain, but he quickly slithered back into his hole. The woodcutter sat for a long time outside the snake's hole, waiting for him to come out. Then he thought, what if the snake comes back for revenge and bites me? I must become friendly with him. So he put some bread and milk in front of the hole. When the snake saw this from his hole, he called out, Woodcutter, as long as you cannot forget your son's pain, I cannot forget my tail. There cannot be peace or friendship between us. The woodcutter understood and went away. The Sly Tortoise once, a hungry tortoise found out that some birds were preparing for a great feast up the high wall outside the forest. So he gathered feathers and stuck them to his body. The birds did not recognize him and asked, You have the most unique feathers. Who are you? The sly tortoise replied, My name is all of us. Help me fly with you. The birds carried the tortoise to their feast. Seeing the food, the tortoise asked, Who will eat all this food? The birds replied, All of us. The tortoise ate all the food, saying, That would be me. The angry birds pegged till all his feathers fell off and left him on the high wall. The tortoise requested, Tell my wife to lay out mattresses so that I may land safely. However, the birds told his wife to bring out the furniture. When the tortoise jumped, he fell on the wooden furniture and broke his shell. The Handsome Stag once, a stag was drinking water at a forest pool. He saw himself in the clear water. How handsome I am, he thought. My antlers branch from my head like young trees. My coat is smooth and glossy. My eyes sparkle like stars. I only wish 
that my legs were sharper. They are so long and thin. I am ashamed of them. Just then, the stag heard the sound of a huntsman's horn. He dashed away through the forest, his long thin legs bearing him swiftly. The forest grew thicker, and suddenly his great spreading antlers got caught in the branches of a tree and held him there. He struggled to escape, but his antlers held him fast. He was able to break away only when the huntsman and the hounds were very near. How foolish I have been, thought the stag. My splendid horns are the cause of trouble, while my thin legs have saved my life. A Lesson to an Elephant A lark had built her nest on a large tree. One day, an elephant shook the branches of that tree, making the lark's eggs fall and break. The poor lark went to a boss and requested, Will you please help me teach the elephant a lesson? The boss agreed. He gathered a swarm of wasps and they attacked the elephant. They stung his eyes. Now the elephant could not see through his swollen eyes. The lark now went to a toad and said, I need your help to teach the elephant a lesson. Go to the deep end of the river and croak loudly. The elephant will follow your voice and will fall into the deep river. The toad agreed. He went to the river and croaked loudly. The elephant was very thirsty. He heard the voice of the toad and followed it. Soon he fell into the river and was rescued after many hours. He never troubled innocent animals again. The Jackal's Mark One day, a hungry jackal saw a little girl sitting up in a tree. Come down, my child, and I will carry you home on my back, said the jackal. I am a sun child. I don't ride on a jackal's back, said the girl. However, the jackal coaxed in such a sweet manner that at last she climbed down and sat on his back. Although she was small and light, yet the jackal began to feel uncomfortable. This was due to the remarkable heat of the sun child. Jump down, he said. However, she refused. Jump down, jump down, pleaded the jackal, just as his fur was beginning to burn. Still, she refused. The jackal could stand no more and with a howl leaped into a dense bush and the little sun child was swept away from his back. Then, burnt and sorry, the jackal ran away into the forest, carrying with him the mark of the sun child. The Croak of a Frog A little frog never listened to what his mother told him. His mother had grown very old, but she was still worried about her son's future. One day, she became very ill. She said, Son, I shall not live much longer. When I die, do not bury me on the mountain. I want to be buried by the river. She said so to make sure that he remained by the river. Soon afterwards, she died. The frog was very sad and wept bitterly. He decided, from now onwards, I will do as my mother would have wanted me to do. So, he buried her by the riverside. But whenever the clouds gathered and dropped the water on the river, he worried. What if mother's grave would be washed away? So he sat by the river and cried when it rained. And still to this day, the frog 
croaks whenever it rains. The clever quail, a hungry jackal, saw a fat quail in the forest while hunting. He came up with a plan and said to the quail, "My old father used to say that a quail usually sings better than other quails if she closes her eyes." The quail believed the jackal and closed her eyes and sang a song. At that moment, the jackal jumped and caught the quail. Then she understood that the jackal had tricked her. She quickly thought of a plan and said, "My dear friend, as you see, it is my fate that you eat me. It was my father's advice that when a quail is eaten, prayers are to be recited. If not, the quail would not be digested well. Now you should first read prayers, then eat me." If you want me to be digested properly, the foolish jackal opened his mouth to read prayers, and the clever quail flew away quickly. The doe's horn. A doe went down and brought water and grass for her fawns every day. Every time she left the house she warned that when she came back she would say open the door my children i brought you grass on the horn and water in the mouth one day a wolf hid and watched how the doe spoke after she had left he came out and spoke with the voice of the doe the fawns thought it was their mother and opened the door The wolf swallowed the fawn and ran away. When the doe came back, she saw nobody at home. As she was crying, another fawn came out from his hiding place. When the doe asked about his brother, the fawn told her everything. The doe went to the wolf and said, "I challenge you." Then they came to a field and fought. The doe cut the wolf's tummy. and her phone came out they returned home happily the crocodile's skin long ago the crocodile had a smooth golden skin he would spend all day in the muddy waters and only come out at night all the other animals would come and admire his beautiful golden skin gradually The crocodile became very proud of his skin and started coming out of the water to bask in the other animals' admiration even while the sun was shining. He began thinking he was better than the other animals and started bullying them. The other animals became angry with his change in attitude. Slowly, fewer and fewer animals came to look at his skin but each day as the crocodile exposed his skin to the sun it became uglier bumpier and thicker soon it was transformed into what looked like a bulging armor the crocodile never recovered from the shame even today he disappears from the view when others approach with only his eyes and nostrils above the surface of the water the heron's bent neck one day a jackal was hunting among some rocks near a lake he noticed that a heron was busy looking for frogs in the lake after a while the heron came near the bank of the lake What a long neck you have," flattered the jackal. "What happens when the wind blows? Doesn't it break in half?" "No, I lower it a little," said the heron. "And when the wind blows harder, then I lower it a little more," said the heron. And she bent her neck. And when it blows a real gale, I lower it. right down to here 
said the silly boat, lowering her head right down to the bank's edge. The jackal jumped up and grabbed the heron's neck with such force that it bent. The heron was so frightened that she immediately flew away. From that day on, the heron has a bend in her neck. The Greedy Lion Once there lived a strong lion in a thick jungle. One day, he was feeling very hungry. He came out of his den and started looking for prey. After searching for a long time, the lion saw a small hare. He caught the hare, thinking, this hare cannot satisfy my hunger, but something is better than nothing. Just as the lion was about to kill the hare, a deer ran in front of him. The lion became greedy and thought, Instead of eating this small hare, let me try to catch that big deer. He let the hare go and went behind the deer. But the deer ran too fast and vanished into the forest. The lion was shocked. He looked all around, but the deer could not be found. The lion regretted for being greedy and letting go of the food he had. His greed left him hungry and disappointed. Adventurous May A swallow couple was moving their nest along with their hatchlings one day. They had told their children to stay together and not to stray. But the youngest hatchling, May, was very adventurous. She had just learned to fly and got distracted easily. May looked all around her while flying. She always stayed behind to notice flowers and insects. The parent swallows had warned May to stay with them. However, as they all started flying, May stopped again and again to admire beautiful things. Soon she realized that she was lost. May searched but couldn't find her parents. She cried, regretting that she didn't listen to her parents. With a glint of hope, May started flying again and called out to her parents. A parrot family saw the stranded swallow and tried to help her. Soon, they found the swallow family. May apologized for not listening to her parents and thanked the parrots for the timely help. The Missing Tail Feather Once the bee found, realized that one of his tail feathers was missing. So he called the best detectives in the forest, the fox and the monkey. The fox was cleverer and wiser than the monkey. He followed the clues to find the missing tail feather. It led him to the deepest of the forests where he found a snake. But he was hesitant to ask for help. So he said nothing to the snake and carried on looking for the missing feather. The monkey was Gregorious and happy detective. He entered the deep forest and found the same snake. He asked the snake, have you seen a peafowl's feather? The snake was all too pleased to lead the monkey to the missing feather. The peafowl had dropped it while dancing in the rain. So the monkey returned the feather and collected his reward. The fox realized he could have asked for help instead of being overconfident. The Clever Woodcutter Long ago, a stripeless tiger saw a woodcutter sleeping near his bullock cart. The tiger crept quietly and whispered to the bullock, Your master is not strong, yet he makes you work for him. So how does he do it? The bullock answered, Why don't you ask him? The tiger sprang over to the woodcutter and asked, I have heard that the source of man's power 
is something called wisdom. The terrified woodcutter replied, I will gladly go and fetch wisdom for you. But I cannot leave a hungry tiger with my bullock. So will you let me tie you to this tree? The tiger agreed. A little later, the clever woodcutter returned with straw and lighted a torch. He laid straw beneath the tiger and set it on fire. The tiger roared until the fire burned the ropes. Then he ran to the river where he soothed his burnt fur. However, his skin had orange and black stripes forever. The Ants and the Worms The queen of beasts had invited all the animals, birds and insects to a great feast. During the feast, the king of ants got up and said, My people are stronger than any of you. Not even the elephant can stand before us. He also insulted the worms, saying that he disliked them very much. They are just poor, wriggling things, he said. The worms were very angry and complained. So the queen of peace said, The best way to decide who the stronger is to fight the matter out. So the next day, the ants left their nest in thousands and marched in a line. The worms also came. The fight was over in a few minutes. As the worms were bitten in pieces by the sharp pincer-like mouths of the ants, the few worms who survived squirmed away and buried themselves out of sight. Ever since, worms have always been afraid and had lived underground. Trust your instinct. An Eagle King's Prime Minister was a parrot. One day, the parrot was late for work. The eagle asked him, What is the matter? The parrot replied, A hunter has set up a net near my nest. Already, a crane and his family have been trapped in the net. I am thinking of making a new nest farther away. But if I do that, I will have to resign as Prime Minister as I cannot fly so far every day. The eagle did not want to lose a good Prime Minister, so he suggested, You should just be a little careful. I am sure nothing will happen. The parrot agreed. However, the very next day, he almost got caught in the hunter's net. He thought, I should have trusted my own instinct. By doing what the eagle asked me to do, I almost lost my life. Then the parrot left and built a new nest far away. The Impulsive Hare Once the moon pulled on her friend, the spider, and said, The animals of the earth are scared. Please tell them that they need not be afraid of dying. The spider slowly made his way to the earth. He met a hare on the way who said, O oh spider, you are too slow. Tell me the moon's message and I'll take it to the earth faster. The spider started. The moon wants the animals of the earth to know that they will all die. The hare did not wait to hear the rest and said, All right. I have to tell the animals of the earth that they will all die. He ran towards the earth. The spider told the moon what had happened. The moon was very angry with the hare for giving the wrong message. When the hare came back, the moon hit him on the nose. That is why to this day the hare has a split lip. The Hunter and the Turtle Long ago, turtles used to live both on land and in water. A hunter once caught a turtle. He took the turtle home and asked his wife to cook him for dinner. The turtle said, You cannot cook me 
unless you take me out of my shell and the shell is the hardest part of my body the hunter said we will break your shell with sticks the clever turtle said that will not help at all why don't you dip me into the sea and loosen up the shell instead the hunter and his wife took the turtle to the sea they threw him into the water and waited however the turtle swam away and shocked both of them the turtle teasingly said i fooled both of you i can actually swim very well in the water i think i will spend the rest of my life in water safe from hunters the kind birch tree a deer and a doe were looking for a place to build their house they requested a peach tree can we build a house under your branches i will soon give birth to a fawn the peach tree said but my fruits may fall on your fawn and hurt it they then went to a walnut tree and asked for his help the walnut tree said no my nuts will hurt your fawn just then they saw a fir tree and asked for his permission the fir tree said my cones may injure your fawn so you had better look for a safer place they finally went to a birch tree and made the same request the kind birch tree said of course you can build a house here my branches will protect your fawn from the sun rain and wind the deer and the doe thanked the birch tree and built their house there they soon became the proud parents of a beautiful fawn The Savior Bear. Two sisters lived near a forest. One day, as they were collecting firewood in the forest, some tribal people came charging towards them. The frightened sisters ran deep into the forest. They finally found a place to hide in the hollow bark of a tree. After a while, a bear walked towards the tree. He just stood calmly and gestured to the sisters to come out. The sisters were confused and frightened but they listened to the bear anyway. The bear then led the two sisters to a cave near a river. He even brought food and water and protected them the entire night. The next morning the bear led the two sisters safely back to their village. Just as the two sisters turned to thank the bear he disappeared into thin air. No one ever saw the bear again. It is said that even today bear protects innocent people who are in trouble in the forest. The cunning fox's trick. A group of people was camping in a forest. By evening they suddenly realized that they had no food left for dinner. A man said I will bring some fresh meat. We can make a bonfire and roast it. He took a club and went to the lake thinking that animals would come to drink water. He lay on the ground and pretended to be dead. After some time, some foxes came to the lake. The fox chief said, "I will check if this man is pretending to be dead." So the fox pulled the man's club cautiously. The man pulled back his club at once and quickly threw his club at the fox. Unfortunately, he missed his aim. He looked for the other foxes, but everybody had run far away. The man thought, "I tried to play a trick on the animals, but the cunning fox played a better trick on me." Trust your parents. A lion king wanted his son to learn good skills and be a good ruler when he grew up. So he decided to send him to the wise ape. However, the cub pleaded, "Father, I do not want to leave this comfortable life and go." The lion replied, 
Son, you must be well trained. It will help you to rule the kingdom well. Unwillingly, the cub left his family and stayed with the wise ape in another forest. There, he learned many skills and tricks. Five years later, an enemy tribe of lions attacked the Lion King's forest. A message was sent for the cub. The well-trained cub came back to help his father. He fought bravely and defeated the enemies. The proud lion hugged him with tears in his eyes. He said, Well done, son, but never misunderstand your parents. Parents have to take tough decisions for their children's good. The cub apologized to his father for mistaking his motive. The Golden Bell A thief stole a golden bell from the king's palace and ran into the forest to hide. There, a tiger saw him hiding behind a tree and pounced on him. Some monkeys found the bell and started playing with it. A woodcutter found the thief's body and thought, A monster living in the forest has killed him and is ringing the bell. He will surely kill us all. He spread the word and people started fleeing the kingdom. The king was very worried. But a hunter came to him and said, Your Majesty, I will find the monster and kill him. The clever hunter took some fruits and water before leaving for the forest. He saw the monkeys playing with the bell and offered the fruits to them. The monkeys dropped the bell and started eating the fruits. The hunter picked the golden bell up and went back. The king rewarded him handsomely for his bravery. The Fox and the Goat On a hot sunny day, a thirsty fox was searching for water. He saw a big well nearby and peeped into it. Suddenly, he slipped and fell into the well. He tried his best to come out, but could not. Just then, a thirsty goat also came to the well. He looked down and was surprised to see the fox in the water. What are you doing down there? asked the goat. The fox replied that he was enjoying the cool and sweet water. He invited the goat to come in and taste it. The goat believed the fox. He could not understand the real motive of the fox behind it. So the foolish goat thoughtlessly jumped into the water. The cunning fox at once climbed up on the goat's back and came out of the well easily. The fox ran away from that place before the poor goat could realize that he had been fooled. The Town Mouse and the Country Mouse A town mouse and a country mouse were friends. One day, the country mouse invited his friend to his home for dinner. The town mouse did not like the roots and vegetables that he was offered and said, Dear friend, you should come with me. I promise you that you will enjoy the food we get in town. The country mouse went along with the town mouse. The town mouse took his friend to the pantry where he lived. It was full of delicious food, flour, oatmeal, figs and so many other things. The country mouse immediately sat down to enjoy the delicacies. But soon, someone or the other would come in to take out food or keep more food there. The mice had to hide time and again. The country mouse got irritated and said, I cannot live in such a place. You may have many delicacies, but I am happy in my countryside. I enjoy my simple dinner without anyone disturbing me. So goodbye. The Elephant and His Friends One day, an elephant wandered into the forest in search of friends. He saw a monkey on a tree and asked, Will you be my friend? The monkey replied, No, you are too big 
and cannot swing on trees. Next, the elephant met a rabbit, but the rabbit also refused and said, "No, you cannot play in the burrow with me." Slowly, all the animals in the jungle refused to be friends with the elephant. Next day, the elephant saw all the animals running for their lives. He asked them why they were running. A bear replied, "There is a tiger in the forest. He will eat all of us." The elephant walked up to the tiger and said, "Please do not eat up those poor animals." But the tiger growled and refused. The elephant got angry and gave the tiger a hard kick. The frightened tiger ran for his life. All the animals thanked the elephant and became his friends. The hungry wolf. Once there was a very hungry wolf. It looked for food here and there, but could not get any. The wolf started getting very restless. At last, it found a big loaf of bread, a large piece of meat, and a few smoked fishes in the hole of a tree. The hungry wolf became very happy. It squeezed into the hole and ate all the food. It was a woodcutter's lunch that the wolf ate. The woodcutter was on his way back to the tree. to have his meal when he saw that there was a wolf inside the hole on seeing the woodcutter the wolf got scared and tried to get out of the hole but all its efforts went to waste and the wolf could not get out of the hole since its tummy was swollen with all the food that it had eaten the woodcutter caught the wolf and gave it a nice thrashing The eagle and the crow. One day, a crow was sitting on a tree in a grassland. A flock of sheep was grazing in that grassland. After a while, the crow saw an eagle flying high in the sky. He noticed that the eagle dived down from the sky and grabbed a lamb with his claws. The eagle took the lamb with him to his nest located high over a tree top. The crow thought. of imitating the eagle so he flew towards another lamb and tried to catch it with his claws but the lamb was too heavy the crow was shocked as his little claws got caught and trapped in the lamb's thick fur he tried hard to get off the lamb but could not his claws were totally entangled in the lamb's thick fur a shepherd saw the crow he caught the crow and put it in a cage the crow became the laughing stock for every passerby the timid lamb once upon a time there was a lamb she never went out of her house because she was always scared that her wool would be sheared her parents were forever cheering her up seeing that she should not be so scared one day when her parents insisted She went out for some time to the park. She enjoyed the fresh air and felt very good. Suddenly, she heard a feeble voice, "Help!" This time, she wasn't scared, but started looking for the source of that voice. She saw a rabbit crouching under a bush. He was injured and seemed scared. He told the lamb how he fell into a hunter's trap and then managed to escape from there. The kind lamb took the rabbit to her home. They became very good friends thereafter. After being able to help someone else who was scared, she herself was not scared anymore. The brave frog. Once upon a time, there lived a little frog near a pond in a beautiful garden. She used to croak every day until midday and then she would go out looking for food. One morning as she was clearing her throat to sing her song as she always did a big storm came and then the rain started. Hours passed by but the rain did not stop. The frog needed to go out to look for some food but she could not do so. She decided not to give up so easily. She came up with a plan to come out of this difficult situation. 
First, she collected the fallen leaves from under the tree. Then, she wove them together, making a little boat. In this manner, she went rowing through the water in the garden, searching for her usual food, carefully and with confidence. The Horse and the Stag Once a wild horse was grazing on a grassland and enjoying its food. After some time, it saw a stag come and nibble in the same grassland. There was enough grass for both of them. But the horse did not want to share it and thought of a plan to get rid of the stag. It saw a man passing by. The horse asked the man to help him kill the stag. The man agreed but said that he would have to mount the horse in order to chase the stag. The horse agreed and very soon the man killed the stag. Now the man refused to get off. The horse began to kick and fling but all it got was a good whipping. At last it had no alternative but to give in to the man and work for him on his farm. The Lost Tree Once there lived a squirrel under a big green tree. It was beginning to turn cold, so she started burying nuts under the tree. When all the nuts were buried under the big green tree, the squirrel decided to take a vacation. After two weeks, when she returned, the squirrel could not find her big green tree. She got worried. Next morning, the squirrel started her search again. She was very hungry and was desperately searching for some food. Suddenly, she met her friend, the frog, and told him the whole story. The frog asked her, Where did you bury the nuts? The squirrel replied, Under the pink green tree. But now, there is a big yellow tree. My green tree has gone. The frog said, Do you know that leaves change color in autumn? Your green tree has become yellow. When the squirrel looked for her buried nuts, she found them under the big yellow tree. She happily dug them all up. The Cock and the Pearl A cock was once strutting up and down in a farmyard. Suddenly, he saw something shining on the ground. Oh, said the cock, what is this shiny little thing? The shining thing was a pearl. The cock stared at the pearl closely. He pecked at it and scratched it a couple of times. The pearl rolled a few inches away from the cock's foot and landed next to some barley grains that the hens had missed. The cock went to gobble up those barley grains, but his foot slipped on the pearl. The cock turned around to look at the strange-looking seat again. He eyed the pearl suspiciously. Upon pecking again, it did not break open. The cock gave a cluck of disgust. He said, You may be a treasure for mankind, but for me, I would rather have the grains of barley. The Foolish Wolf Once a watchdog was lying in the sun in front of a farmyard gate. A wolf who was passing by stealthily pounced upon the watchdog. The scared dog begged for his life and said, Sir, please leave me as I have just recovered from a long illness. I am very thin and weak. Let me become fat after feeding on the rich food that I get here. Then you can come and eat me. The wolf believed the dog's words and went away. The dog thanked God and decided not to sleep in an unsafe place again. After a few days, the wolf came to the farm again looking for the dog. This time, the dog was lying very safely on the roof. On seeing the dog, the wolf said, Hope you remember your promise. So come down and be my meal. The dog said, Who makes such promises? Get lost, Mr. Wolf. The wolf went away, repenting over his foolishness. The Brave Birds A gannet and a sea duck were arguing 
over whether mermaids exist or not. They decided to search the bottom of the sea. They dived deep down under the sea. First, they saw colorful fish, then medium-sized fish and then large fish. Soon, they dived so deep in the sea that they could not see anything due to the darkness. Both the birds got terribly scared and immediately returned to the surface. The duck decided to carry torch in the next trip. The two birds started their journey again. When they reached deep into the sea, they switched on their torch. When the dark sea was lit up, they saw that they were surrounded by mermaids. The mermaids told them that they thought the gannet and the duck were scared because last time they left so quickly. But when they returned, the mermaids became very happy. They congratulated them on their bravery. At last, the gannet and the duck became great friends with the mermaids. The Elephant's Long Trunk Many years ago, elephants had small trunks. One day, an elephant saw a crocodile lying down on a river bank. The elephant said, Hey, you crawling creature, I wonder why you are not small like other creatures. You are too long for your own comfort. The crocodile lost his temper and said, Wait, I will show you how strong a crawling creature can be. Immediately, the crocodile caught the elephant's trunk in his mouth. The elephant cried out in pain and tried to pull out his trunk from the jaws of the crocodile. But the crocodile held on to it with his sharp teeth. Soon, the other animals heard the elephant's cries and came to his rescue. They pulled the elephant by his tail, which caused the trunk to be stretched long. The elephant became very sad upon seeing his stretched out long trunk. But the animals told him that now he could reach the higher branches of the trees to eat leaves and fruits. Finally, the elephant felt happy again. Dr. Crokey One day, a lame frog left the pond of a village and hopped away to a lake in a nearby forest. He wanted to make a new home. But when the frog reached the forest, he did not see anyone around. Now, how would he get to meet the animals and make friends? Suddenly, he got an idea. He climbed up on a high rock by the lake and announced, Friends, please come here. I am new in the forest. I want to meet all of you. Many animals heard the frog's croak and came to the lake. The frog said, Let me introduce myself. I am Dr. Crokey. I am a doctor who can cure any ailment that you might be suffering from. I have medicines for all the diseases. Hearing this, the jackal said, If you can cure everyone, then why have you not cured your legs? See how you keep limping around? All the animals and the birds laughed at the frog. The frog turned red with shame. His lie had been found out. The Fox and the Snake Once there was a fox who lived in the deepest part of the forest. One fine morning, when the fox was roaming around the forest, he saw a huge, thick and long snake enjoying the sun. His long body stretched from one corner of the path to the other. The fox was very impressed by the big size of the snake. He thought, it's such a large snake. If I try to imitate him, I will surely become as long and as mighty as the snake. I must try this at once. So the fox lay down on the path by the snake's side and started stretching his body. He tried hard, but his bones and muscles ached. Yet he did not grow long enough. At last, he stretched so hard that many of his bones made a crackling sound and broke at once. The poor fox did not know that one should not compare oneself with others who are stronger or larger than oneself. The 
the boot in the jungle deep in the jungle where no man went there lived many wild animals one day they came across a strange object it was a man's boot they had never seen such a thing before all the animals started discussing about the strange object i am sure it's the shell of a fruit said the bear can't you see that it is a nest there is a hollow in which the bird can lay its eggs said the wolf how can you be so foolish said the goat look here these are roots so obviously it is a plant a duck was listening to their argument it said i have been to a land where many men live and this thing you see is called a boot men wear such things on their feet you keep out of this said all the animals we have seen no such thing so we cannot believe you the duck said believe what you want to but remember that you can't know everything the value of a family once there was a deer who lived with his family but he was not happy living with them one day he decided to move to another place where he could be away from his family and feel happy and he left his home after a long walk the deer met a goat on the way they both became good friends and went to look for some fresh grass but there were two wolves observing them from behind a rock the wolves were wondering whether the goat's meat was delicious or the deer's suddenly the deer heard a noise and said i think somebody is watching us but the goat did not respond suddenly the deer spotted the wolves and screamed at her run my friend we are in danger they both began to run leaving the hungry wolves far behind after this dangerous encounter the deer realized that he should go back home a home is the safest place to live peacefully and he also understood the value of a family the bat the birds and the beasts once there was a bat who lived in a jungle one day a big fight was about to take place between the birds and the beasts of the jungle the bat was not willing to join any of the groups when the birds asked him to join them he said i cannot join you because i am a beast later when some beasts asked him to join them he said i am a bird how can i join you luckily at the last moment peace prevailed and no battle took place so the bat asked the birds if he could join their group but all the birds turned against him and the bat had to fly away he then went to the beasts to join them but all the beasts also turned against him and started hitting him so to save his life the bat ran away from that place as quickly as possible and took shelter in a deep dark cave he still lives there the missing tail once upon a time there was a baby lizard who lived in between the rocks in a jungle with his family the baby lizard loved to lie down under the sun for hours one day when the baby lizard was relaxing under the sun he noticed that he had lost his tail he started crying his mother heard him crying and came out the mother lizard said baby maybe it is time for you to get a new look the baby lizard got even more confused he thought that his mother wanted him to find a new tail so he set off to find one days and months passed the baby lizard kept looking for a new tail but could not find any he was very disappointed and went back home he started crying again in front of mother lizard but his mother instead of consoling him was laughing she asked him to turn around and look at his tail and guess what 
the baby lizard had a new tail. His tail had grown back. Three fishes. Three fishes lived together in a lake. The first fish was very lazy. The second was a little wise and tended to make some good decisions. The third one was an intelligent fish. It usually thought a lot and made decisions wisely. One day, the third fish heard two fishermen talk about fishing in their lake. She shared everything with the other two fishes. The second fish said, We can think about it tomorrow. The first fish said, Oh, let us just ignore it. Both the fish refused to accompany the third fish. So the third fish moved to nearby lake alone. Next day, the two fishermen arrived. The second fish saw them fishing and planned to escape. As she was caught in the fishing net, she pretended to be dead. The fisherman threw it back into the lake and so the second one also escaped. But the first fish was caught and lost her life. First act and then tell. One day a mother crab and a baby crab were walking on the beach. Watching him walk sideways, the mother crab asked her son, why do you walk sideways like that? You should always walk straight ahead with your toes turned out. Please teach me how to walk in a straightforward manner with toes turned out, mother, requested the little crab obediently. So the mother crab tried to walk in a straightforward manner, but try as she might, she could not do so. Instead, she was also walking sideways just like her son. After that, the mother crab tried to turn out her toes, but to her shock, she tripped and fell on her face. The father crab was watching all this from a distance. On seeing this, he had a hearty laugh and told the mother crab, Do not tell others how to act unless you can set a good example yourself. The Big Mouth Fox A reindeer and a fox were great friends. One day, the reindeer found a bucket full of fruits under a big banyan tree in the forest. He decided to keep it a secret. He shared the secret with the fox and told him not to share it with anybody else. But the fox told the secret to all the animals of the forest. Next day, when the reindeer went to the secret place, to eat the fruits, he discovered that all the fruits had been eaten. The reindeer realized that the fox had cheated him. So he thought of a plan to teach the fox a lesson. That same day, he told the fox that there was a lake full of fish in the middle of the forest. The fox again told everyone in the forest about this. All the animals searched for the lake. But there was no such lake. The animals got very angry for their wasted effort and thrashed the big mouth fox for his lie. Lola the Whale Lola was a very big whale. She always lived alone in the ocean. She appeared quite shy and aloof and had no friends. Whenever anyone tried to get close to her and cheer her up, Lola would go away. Due to this behavior of hers, no one liked to come close to her. But old Durga, a hundred-year-old sea turtle, told everyone that Lola was a good whale. She was friendly once but had changed over time. One day, Dido, a dolphin, heard about Lola and decided to follow her secretly. She found out that Lola had terribly bad breath because a little fish had got trapped in a corner of her mouth. This problem embarrassed Lola so much that she did not dare to speak to anyone. Dido talked to Lola and convinced Lola to take her help. Dido removed the remains of the fish from Lola's mouth. 
When the bad breath was gone, Lola was no longer embarrassed. Soon, Lola became friends with all the animals in the ocean. The Mocking Tiger Once there lived a clever, strong tiger in a forest. He always made fun of other animals. He especially mocked the elephant by calling him slow and clumsy. One day, all the animals were holding a meeting in a cave near a mountain. Suddenly, there was a storm and a huge tree fell in front of the cave, blocking its entrance. Everyone expected that the strong, clever tiger would easily help them to get out. But unfortunately, the tiger could not move the huge tree. Finally, a bumblebee escaped through a tiny gap between the rocks. She flew off in search of the elephant who had not come for the meeting because he was feeling sad. When the elephant heard of the problem, he immediately came to help. He moved the tree away from the entrance of the cave, setting the animals free. The animals congratulated both the elephant and the bumblebee. That day, the tiger learned his lesson and never mocked any animal again. Proud to be an ant In a big colony of ants, there was a small ant who always dreamt of being a ladybird or a beetle. One day, she was fed up of being a tiny, helpless ant. She thought that the rules for the ants were very strict. On one windy day, she grabbed and held on to a big leaf that came flying past. She sat on it and flew high in the air. When she was flying high in the sky, she saw no sign of any beetle or ladybird nests. But one thing which she could clearly see was a big ant hill. The ant hill was strong enough to withstand the windy weather. The ant hill was visible from a great distance too. The tiny ant realized the power of teamwork that an ant army had. She also realized that ant hills constructed by ants were very strong. So finally, she felt very proud to be an ant. The Special Cow Once upon a time, there was a special cow in a village. This cow produced coffee-flavored milk instead of plain milk. One day, a cafe owner from a big city visited the village. He came to know about this special cow and got very impressed. The cafe owner convinced the cow owner to sell his special cow to him. When he reached home with this special cow, his wife advised him to return the cow to the village. She felt that the cow, being a village cow, would not be able to survive in city conditions. But the man ignored his wife's advice. Within a few days, the cafe became very popular. But gradually, the taste of the coffee-flavored milk changed. It started tasting less sweet and less creamy. Soon, the cafe started losing its customers. The cafe owner realized his mistake and understood that the cow missed its village. Soon, one day, he finally took the special cow back to its village. The Magical Teeth Long, long ago, there was a lizard. He invented a magical set of teeth. He thought of fixing those teeth on one of his toads. After the magical teeth were fixed, the toad became a happy and smiling amphibian. He ate everything and started speaking too. Once, the lizard noticed that the toad was getting fond of eating candies. I am enjoying these candies a lot, said the toad merrily. Look after your teeth, Mr. Toad. Brush them and keep them clean so that they may stay cavity free. Too many sweets will spoil your teeth. The lizard kept instructing the toad. But the toad did not pay any attention. Gradually, the toad's teeth started decaying. He discovered, to his shock, that there were holes in his teeth. 
Then the poor toad's teeth started falling off, and soon the toad lost all his teeth and also the ability to talk. Poor Mr. Toad, if he had kept his teeth clean, he would not have lost them. The colorful animal planet. Several years ago, there existed an animal planet. On this planet, each kind of animal lived in its own special land. The orange elephant lived on the orange land. The blue crocodiles lived on the blue land, and so on. One day, on the land of the orange elephants, a baby elephant came running towards the other elephants. He seemed quite horrified. He said that he had seen some purple animals at the border of their land. None believed the baby elephant, so he asked them to follow him to the border. When they reached the border, they saw a different colored land. It was purple land full of purple animals. The purple animals were equally amazed too. Upon meeting one another, the orange and the purple animals decided to search for other colored animals. When all the animals were finally at one place, heavy rain began pouring. The rain mixed up all the animals' colors, leaving each one with the color it has today. The Lion Without a Roar Once there was a lion who could not roar at all. He was unable to roar since birth. There was no one who could teach him or tell him that lions always roared. So he learned to talk softly with everyone. Once the lion was very annoyed with a pig. He wanted to roar at the pig but was unable to do so. The lion then invented a roaring machine. One day the lion saw the same pig again. The lion thought of using his roaring machine. His roaring machine sent out a truly terrifying roar. Roar! All the animals in the forest got scared and none dared to go near him. The lion became lonely and sad. He decided not to use that machine again. Slowly, using the kind and cordial tone of his voice, the lion managed to restore the animal's trust in him. He realized that one could convey any message by speaking softly to and that there was no need to roll. Ice in the Jungle Early one morning, a huge block of ice appeared in the middle of the jungle. It was as tall as tree and as huge as an elephant. It was extremely cold. All the animals thought it had some treasure inside it. A huge hula balloon was created. The king of the jungle, the lion, announced that whoever could get the treasure out from this huge object would succeed him as the next king. As soon as the king announced this, a race began among the animals. All of them wanted to try their luck. All the animals tried to break the block forcefully, but they could only chip out pieces from it. They soon noticed that the size of the ice block was reducing. A rabbit picked some pieces of the ice up. They had broken off the block. They melted soon in his hand and turned into water. The rabbit then told the animals that it was not any treasure but just a huge block of ice. Laughing aloud, the rabbit said, Before leaping blindly at the problem, we should have taken some time to observe it. The Selfish Baboon Long ago, it was so hot that water was found only in a few small ponds throughout the forest. A baboon lived near one such pond. He chased away all the animals, saying, Nobody is allowed to drink water from this pond. This water belongs to me. He also lit a fire close to the pond so that he might protect his water during the cold nights. 
One day, a zebra came to the pond. Back then, zebras only had beautiful white coats. The selfish baboon said to the zebra, "Look, if you want the water, you will have to fight with me." The zebra kicked the baboon, and he flew high up into the rocks. The zebra had kicked so hard that he himself lost the balance and fell into the fire. The burning sticks. fell on his beautiful white coat creating black stripes all over his body the baboon fell with a loud thud on his buttocks and got a red bottom forever fight in the sea once upon a time dolphins whales and many other small colorful fish lived in the sea The dolphins and the small fish were very good friends. One day, the whales started harming the small fish. This made the dolphins angry and they started fighting with the whales. It looked as if the fight would never end. The fight was at its peak when suddenly a sprat lifted its head out of the sea and said, "I will solve the matter if all of you accept me as your king." One of the dolphins was very wise. She understood that the sprat was taking advantage of the fight between the whales and the dolphins. She replied, "Even if we get killed in our fight with one another, we will not let anybody interfere in our matter." The sprat's idea of ruling over them failed. Now all of them understood that the interference of a third person would be harmful for everyone. and they called off the fight the shaking scale one day a zebra found a bathroom scale he was quite amused to see it he asked his friend the parrot about it the parrot knew about the bathroom scale he explained the working of the scale to the zebra immediately the zebra stood on the weighing scale to weigh himself it became a fun activity for him but soon the zebra became very obsessed about his weight he started getting annoyed with the scale when he noticed that the scale showed increased reading for his weight he would then start kicking the scale the scale got irritated next morning the zebra came to weigh himself again however as soon as the zebra stepped onto the scale it began shaking and the zebra fell down every time the zebra got onto the scale it would shake him off and the zebra would fall off and hurt himself soon he decided not to kick the scale and got over his obsession about his weight too who is the more superior it was a hot summer day and 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 a fly were bitterly arguing about who was the more superior a rabbit who was sitting in his burrow observed them peacefully first the fly said proudly hey ant i am superior to you i can fly i can go into temples and freely taste the offerings there on the other hand you have to work hard to get food so you see i have a better life It was the ant's turn now. She replied, "Do not be so proud, my dear fly. You are always hated when you enter temples. You are driven away as soon as you sit on anyone. I work hard and gather plenty of grain for winter. Later on, when you shiver in the cold, I am safe in my comfortable home." The rabbit came out from his burrow and said, "Mr. Fly, Remember before finding fault with others first look at your own faults Thorsten the elephant long ago there lived a herd of elephants in a valley every spring they would leave their valley by the mountains and travel west to the big blue sea in winters they would return home to the valley the oldest elephant Eugelon would often speak about the adventures of Thorsten who was a small elephant. One day 
Thurston was crossing a large grassy field when he heard the sounds of a fight and a cry for help. When he went close, he saw a brood of little red scorpions attacking a big brown ant. Thurston did not really care for the scorpions and he rushed, charging and trumpeting, scaring all the scorpions away. When he went closer to the big black ant, Thurston could see that she was severely injured. He placed the ant on a big leaf and poured some drops of water over it. Slowly, the ant started moving. She thanked Thurston for his help and he left the place happily. Like this, Thurston would continue to help small creatures. Thanks for watching. Do like, share, subscribe to Sahil Bookhouse.